one of the ways to understand it <clears throat> is that the prophets when they enter their covenant with Allah the prophets when they are bestowed the revelation upon them and the task of bringing la ilaha illallah to the people they no longer are resurrected alone the prophets once they have become prophets are not resurrected on the day of judgment by themselves but instead they are resurrected with their entire ummah they are resurrected and stand in front of Allah with their entire ummah and are responsible for them. And this is why the Prophet وسلم, in his Hajjat al Wada'a, in his final Hajj, he stood in front of his people and he said, Hal Have I conveyed the message? And they said, Yes. So he stood looking up to the heavens, raising his finger pointing to the people then pointing to Allah and saying Allahumma fashhad Allahumma fashhad Allahumma fashhad that O Allah bear witness O Allah bear witness O Allah bear witness that I have conveyed this message out of fear of the fact that he would stand in front of Allah responsible for the entire ummah so he asks Allah to bear witness to the fact that he brought us this message complete and without any defects and in marriage, when we enter into the contract of marriage, when we enter into that tremendous oath in that tremendous covenant, we are no longer accountable for our own selves. We are no longer resurrected by ourselves alone. We are resurrected responsible for our families and our offspring. We are resurrected responsible for our actions with regards to not just ourselves, but the actions of our wives and the actions of our children. Your ability to love Allah and to guide your family towards that doubles. And your ability to sin and to mislead your family from the obedience of Allah also doubles. The prophets stand in front of Allah with not only the ajr of themselves, but the ajr of their entire ummah. Not only the goodness and the reward of themselves, but the reward of their entire ummah. And the people who are married stand in front of Allah, not only with the good of themselves, but the good of their entire families. And not only with the sin of themselves, but the sin of their entire families. In marriage you are no longer alone. And the Prophet says, كُلُّكُمْ رَا وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ That all of you are shepherds and all of you are responsible for your flock. This is what marriage does, you're no longer alone. You have a flock that you are responsible over. And so when a person smokes, they are not just committing the sin by themselves. Their cigarettes are not only harming their own lungs, but they're harming their whole family. And they are preconditioning their children to believe that that action is a righteous action. Because what child doesn't grow up thinking that their father is their hero? Our sins precondition our family to allow them to believe that they are righteous actions, that they are good actions. That so what? If my father is smoking or drinking or not praying, there's nothing wrong with that. Our sins don't just harm ourselves, but they affect our entire family and offspring, our children and maybe even their children and their children and their children. And so with the covenant of the prophets, they stand in front of Allah responsible for their entire nations, for their entire ummah. And with the covenant of marriage, you stand in front of Allah responsible for your entire family and your entire offspring. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls them both mithaq and ghaliva. They are both tremendous, overwhelming oath, overwhelming covenants between the slave Allah and the people that they are responsible over. 
And so when we have lost the ability to understand the function of marriage, then how on earth are we supposed to be able to transform the history of this ummah? And in the verses I began with, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنُرِيَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَحْذَرُونَ That we would show Fir'aun and Haman and his soldiers from them all that they feared. How are we supposed to raise an ummah that is not afraid to stand up to the Fir'aun of today? To stand up to the Haman of today. To stand up to the armies of today which are built for the purpose of humiliating. For the purpose of terrorizing. For the purpose of drinking the entire resources of nations. And their wealth. When we can't understand the function of our family units. Instead, we built our lives with little purpose. So we built our marriages with no purpose. And our children could spend half of their lives wasted before they even ask themselves, what is my purpose?